Hey everyone, I'm here at uh, SEMA with eMuscle Cars and uh, was able to grab Kevin. How's it going, Kevin? Going great, going great. You got a pretty cool car here. Can you tell me a bit about it? Definitely, this is a uh, 1965 Shelby Cobra that uh, we originally sourced from Superformance. Okay. Uh, who's the source of both uh, the best replica and all original CSX Cobras. Uh, this is one of their fiberglass body uh, two frame cars. So it's got their modern suspension and uh, kind of a blank slate build. So we buy them with no motor and no transmission. Okay. And then we convert them to electric. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about this electric conversion. Definitely. So uh, first I'll tell you a little about my team. We're a team of engineers, uh, both electrical engineering, mechanical engineers, and motorsports engineers. Okay. And so we kind of attack it as an engineering problem, not as a you know, one-off car build. So we actually started with, uh, now getting the build, uh, it's a Tesla-based, Tesla motor in the back, it's their largest drive unit, uh, the performance drive unit out of the Model S sedan. And we designed it around a motor cradle to match the frame of the car. So the car uses a two by four steel tube frame. So our motor cradle uses a two by two and two by four steel tube frame. Interesting. Um, we have jigs that mount up to the frame. Uh, so we, we modify with drill guides into the frame. We remove their trunk our motor cradle goes into the car, uh, mounts the motor right between the rear axles. We actually reinforce the frame in a couple different places, so it's actually stiffer than the original car. Sure. Um, so being Tesla-based, it puts out about 600 horsepower. So under here is where the motor is tucked. Uh, right behind the logo. Right behind the logo. So cool. right behind our eCobra logo. You wouldn't got even a motor. know? Wouldn't even know. Uh, almost has a full trunk. Right above the logo is actually a gear tray that's hidden. It's got all of our AEM controls. So our charger, our vehicle control unit, our BMS, and our uh, power distribution unit is all right there. Very serviceable, right on top of the motor. All AEM electronics. All uh, AEM electronic, uh, electronics except for the battery management. We use dilithium battery management. Okay. Um, and uh, we're we're agnostic, really, to the battery management. We've used a few different brands, and we use what works best. Cool. That's awesome. Now, I know that uh, that you track and race as well. Have you taken this onto the track? Had some fun? We haven't been on a, uh, a, a true track yet. So right now, we've done a lot of testing around our facility. Okay. We've got open roads and uh, some private roads around our facility. So we've done a lot of testing there. However, we do have plans to take this car and one or, one or two of our other EVs to the track very, very soon to do some, uh, do some drag racing, do some, uh, some high-speed testing, and so forth. Sweet. That sounds good. So 600 horsepower from the Model S uh, motor. And uh, uh, how big is the battery pack? So we actually offer a few battery packs in this car. Okay. We offer a small like, drag pack, autocross pack. So each pack has the same power. They just have less capacity. Got it. So we offer one that, uh, for, strictly for drag racing and autocross, it's about 16 kilowatt hours, then a 32 kilowatt hour battery pack, 48, and then uh, we have a new battery pack that will fit in this car, it'll be 66 kilowatt hours. Awesome. Uh, so in a car this light, it weighs less than half of a Model S Tesla, you know, with that much kilowatt hour, it actually will go quite far. What, uh, what is the total build weight of this? Something around 2,600? Yeah, so we're right around 25, 2,600 pounds 25, uh, with an average size battery pack in it. Very yeah, cool. so it actually weighs less less than a gas one for sure. Do you at least know like zero to sixty, or is so, that that's what you guys are going to benchmark it here coming we, up? Yeah, so I'll wait until we kind of get to the drag ship to get some form, formal numbers. But uh, by GPS meters in our phone, it's it's sub three seconds. Okay. So it's extremely fast. Yeah. Um, we don't know how sub three seconds. I don't know how accurate the uh, you know, GPS accelerometers are in your cell phones. Uh, but we can't wait to get the drag ship in the next couple weeks. That's exciting. So are you using the same uh, same gearbox from the Model S motor? We are. You are? So it's the same, uh, I believe, 9.7 to 1 gear reduction. Then what does this do? And so, I see there's a gear shift here. That's just the e-brake. Just e-brake? That's just the e-brake. Okay. So yeah, no shifter in the car. Uh, single speed, uh, solid, uh, solid uh, connection to the axles. So no clutch, no shifter. And, but you do have e-brake. But you do have an e-brake. So car has... Uh, large wheelwood brakes on it that have a, a manual e-brake built into the, to the rotors. And eventually we're working on an electronic parking brake, uh, but it's not in this vehicle. So it'll be on the next vehicle. Got it. And that uses a, an electronic actuated caliper on the, on the rear brake. So that way you can actually put park in, instead of just turning the motor into park, park mode, it actually does lock the rear axle. Got it. Uh, all of our gauges are replica gauges made by Speed Hut. 
we worked with them to develop an exact replica of the Cobra gauges. So one to one, we were we at first investigated retrofitting the gauges to to become uh, digital. Sure. So using the original gauges, but the lead time and the benefit didn't really outweigh the speed at which Speed Hut can get us those gauges. Uh, their lead time is great, and the fit and finish is excellent. Yeah, it looks it looks like stock OEM. That's our goal. Yeah. So the goal of this and and our other builds. Uh, to keep it as stock as possible or as all original uh, as possible and let the customer really dictate how they like to customize the vehicle. If they would like to take it to a body shop and put wide body fenders on it, you know, so we'll help them with that. And we can work directly with um, the restoration shops. Uh, we're really an electrification partner. Uh, we will do a full mechanical restoration on the vehicle. However, we don't want to be in the paint and body business and, you know, uh, installing trim on a car. We can do all of that, but again, I think there's experts in the, in the game that really are better at that than us. Got it. So we're a team of engineers, not, not paint and body guys. So if someone wants to work with you, are you guys really, they should be coming with the car already? Or would they be able to ring you up and say, hey, we want this out the door? So that's kind of, that's where we are somewhat unique. Um, in addition to our technical expertise, we have a plethora of cars already in stock, ready to convert. We can also take your vehicle and convert it as well. Okay. So we can do all the above. And we can supply new cars, such as this Cobra. The Cobra is a brand new car that we, we sell zero miles electrified. Uh, so you can buy it directly from us, or you can choose to go buy it uh, from Superformance themselves and bring it to us to electrify. Got it. Or any classic car, uh, primarily Camaros, Mustangs, Corvettes, uh, Cobras. And this spring, or this early spring, we're working on uh, Ford Broncos as well. Sweet. Yeah, there's a lot of options there. Yeah, and we have each one of those in stock. Uh, so we purchased a lot of R&D cars when we started the company. So we get 3D scan each car. See what the envelope we're working with is. So we can look at the, uh, the engine bay. We can look at the trunk, the, um, in between the axles, the wheel-to-wheel -wheel dimensions uh, for each of the vehicles to see which motor fits best, which batteries fit best, and really optimize the package. That's awesome. And then if someone wanted, if someone was like, hey, I am a DIYer, I really just want the drivetrain, I want to take the engineering you guys did, kind of like a crate engine, is that that's possible as well? On a couple chassis, so it's not possible on this Cobra. Not on the Cobra. Um, but okay. it is possible on our Camaro and Mustang platforms. Okay. So we, we've really worked hard to make sure that our practices are as, as easy to install and bolt in as possible, mainly for our team. So we can turn around customer cars quickly and they're as uh, minimally invasive as possible. So not a lot of cutting or welding. Um, our, our newest Camaro retrofit is 100% bolt-in um, for our smallest battery pack. And if you increase the battery size, you do have, we'd have to modify the trunk slightly. Uh, but everything is, is fairly bolt-in. Uh, and the only cuts come with templates. You know, we, could, we could supply that to a customer, no problem. Interesting. Uh, we'd prefer to work with shops, so we can kind of talk to that shop and, and kind of educate them in the process of, of our kit, how to install it our package really, yeah. and how to install that. And then we can actually work at that shop, go there and commission the high voltage part of the kit. Because uh, we don't really want to push that on indi individuals. Um, you know, high voltage high is voltage inherently whole not, ball game, right? not as safe as low voltage. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we really like to make sure everything's installed the right way, safely, and so forth. The good thing about our kits though is everything is plug and play. So the high voltage battery connections you have to make are are, are protected from uh, exposure. So when you're clicking it in uh, to the battery box or plugging it into the motor, you really don't have to worry about too many problems because we do use high quality uh, double insulated connectors. Most of our wiring harnesses are uh, strain released internally and externally. So wires are, are looped, uh, you know, service loops inside the, the sheathing. And then they do use uh, watertight uh, uh, panel glands for going through and firewalls and such. So it's, it's a pretty lengthy uh, and well-developed kit to make it as high quality as possible for the end user. That's awesome. And you, it's like covered because of the carpet, right? But is this, this is where, what are we looking at here? This is high voltage shutoff, it is. right? And then battery pack underneath. So yeah, we've got our, our, our main serviceable items up top. So we've got high voltage on and off. We've got our coolant reservoir and we've got our brake fluid reservoir. Okay. So anything that needs service or checking uh, is right here. Right there. So we also have kill switches for the uh, high voltage inside the cabin. And you can also turn the ignition off. That controls the high voltage as well. Oh, very cool. And this is all water cooled? And everything. So the batteries are actually uh, conductively cooled through aluminum uh, cold plates. Okay. The motor and the charger are liquid cooled. Very cool. Uh, we use LG uh, 
pouch cell batteries, and those are more efficient than the uh, traditional cylindrical, like Tesla style batteries that require cooling. So pouch cells actually don't generate nearly as much heat. Interesting. And you're able to get enough voltage to uh, run the Model S, no problem with those. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, in fact, they don't take they don't have nearly as much uh, voltage sag as the Tesla batteries themselves. As Tesla batteries go down in voltage, they do. They they will reduce in power output as well. The pouch cells are much more constant. What state of charge do you start hitting into the voltage sag on uh, on these LG Chem pouches? You know, off the top of my head, uh, I don't know that number, but I, you know, this is a uh, 360, 370 nominal battery, so at full charge it's a hair over 400. Um, so somewhere, you know, probably low 300s, uh, somewhere around there, you'd start to notice it. But you have quite a big range of, of, of battery where you wouldn't notice at all. Very cool. All right, well this is such a, such a cool build, beautiful paint job, um, and uh, I can't wait to sync back up with you guys and find out what the benchmarking comes. Maybe go for a ride too. Yeah, let's do it. All right, sounds All good. Right. All right, thank you, Kevin. Cool, of course.